things, including write the Bible. And, you know, I, I'm a, but that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King anti-Semitic crowd. So what has taken place now, okay? And Candice has found herself once again at the center of all of these things. And um, what's this guy's name? Andrew Curvin. He also works for Daily Wire. He came out and this is what he had to say. Okay. And then we're going to go into uh, the tweets that Candice put out. That way you guys, you should be able to follow to see exactly the, the build up, how how we got here. It's included right the Bible. And, you know, I, I'm a, but that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms, except this Christ the King anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King, and one day every knee will bow and recognize it because he's not just my King, he's King of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews. You are quoting scripture. I took off my paper crown and bowed my knee before his crown of golden light. I became a true man and a free man, and the joy in my heart has only grown. You know, when I did this, by the way, the priest who baptized me said, you know, Christians won't accept you. They'll, you'll still be a Jew. And I said, well, I am. A, that's my race. I'm a Jew. I'm proud of my race. It's a, it's a great race. It's done many, many great things, including write the Bible. And, you know, I am a Jew. But that hasn't happened at all. Christians have welcomed me with open arms except this Christ the King anti-Semitic crowd. Christ is the King, and one day every knee will bow and recognize it because he's not just my King, he's King of the universe. But when you use that phrase to mean that God has abandoned his chosen people, the Jews, through whom he came into this world incarnate, and that he's broken his promises, his covenant with the Jews, you are quoting scripture like Satan does in the Bible. You are quoting scripture to your purposes, and that to me is specifically wicked. You know, when you spit that phrase at Ben Shapiro, my friend Ben Shapiro, and, and you know, I, un I understand this. All, every, all of you who love Ben, and I love Ben, and Jordan Peterson, you all want to see them find Jesus because you know what joy and, and freedom that gives you, and, and you certainly feel that it alters your relationship with God. But when I think about this, to be honest with you, uh, you know, and I know some people will disagree with this, but I... Life is not a game show where you guess the name of God and, and you get to go to heaven, honk, you know, yes, the name is Jesus. I look at Ben's life and I think if, if Ben were to embrace Jesus Christ, it would cause devastation to his family, to the people who love him, to the people who listen to him, to his position in the world. I just have this feeling that God has put this guy where he wants him to do what he wants him to do. And as you know, I feel that, you know, the Jews were not abandoned by God. I, I feel the same way about Jordan. Jordan struggles with this stuff, and I, I feel like I have an inkling of why he has to struggle with it, but his struggle is inspiring to other people. And I think God wants his boys where he's got them, and I, th there's no thought in my mind that he is going to send these guys into battle and then turn his back on them when they come marching home. It's not a game show. You know, Christ is love. Christ is truth. Christ is the logos of the moral. That, that just doesn't sit with me in the least. Okay, so that was uh, Andrew. He works also for Daily Wire. I guess, you know, he came out to defend Ben and everything. That's fine. They can do that because they know they in awakens the things that were happening at the Daily Wire. Who knows? But all these things are playing in public. Okay? There's been uh, quite a backlash. So now we're going to go into how all these things uh, transpired. Okay? And the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this Yeah, and, yeah, and I think she's been absolutely disgraceful. I think that, I think that her, her post sophistication on these particular issues has been ridiculous. It's not post sophistication, it's ridiculous. Everybody can see the moves that she's making, the things that she's saying, and I find it disreputable. Okay. So, uh, that clip that you just watched over there, okay, that was Ben Shapiro. Somebody recorded that on a TikTok. It wasn't all that. And Ben Shapiro was responding to this about Candace Owens, okay? Okay, so this is, uh, Ben Shapiro was responding to this tweet about Candace Owens. What had happened? This was last year in November when uh, the Kanye West uh, debacle came about, DEFCON, Crisis King, things of that nature. So this is what Candace tweeted, okay? And uh, we're going to read it's not a long tweet. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And this is what she, because that's the scripture, right? It's the same one on the mount. No one can save two masters. Either you hate the one and love the, uh, and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot save both God and money. Okay? And then Candice tweeted this, saying what? Christ is king. Okay? This was, uh, this was last year. And, for, and then Ben Shapiro, I, I already did a video about these things, okay? So you guys, you can take advantage of those videos. Then Ben Shapiro tweeted responding to Candice. Candice, I'm paraphrasing, okay? If you're not, uh, you know, if you're, if you're not interested with Daily Wire, by all means, quit. Why are you still taking money from Daily Wire if you are out here calling, you know, people cannot save two masters at once, right? And then she tweeted something that says what? Christ is king. So all this, Candice is responding to Ben Shapiro. Why? Because Candice had tweeted out saying, uh, there's no country that, can be, that should be doing genocide, things of that nature. Okay? Who is out here expecting a country to be doing genocide? Nobody. We understand that is. But Candice was saying that in relation to the war that's happening in Gaza. Okay? Israel is at war with Gaza. That's not genocide. There's a war that's happening over there. That's not genocide. Genocide has a meaning. But that's what Candice was referring to, even though she ended up denying. Okay? So now, uh, fast forward, we are in 20, uh, 20, you know, this time around, right? Candice Owens uh, gets fired prior to having all these issues with the Jewish community. And mind you, during all that time, uh, she hosted this guy. I already did a video about him. Feinstein something. So controversial people, even within the Jewish community. So all these things, just like, okay, you are you taking a dig on Ben? Are you taking a dig on Ben? Are you trolling Ben? So eventually the roosters come home to roost. So this is what Candice tweeted, okay? And this is now recently. And she says, and I quote, the reason why some people believe that with enough insistence they can convince american christians that the basic truth christ is king is actually anti-semitic is because they have been successfully spiking the ball on christianity for the past 60 years inch by inch by pretending to be our friends and making us fearful of having the media project us as overzealous is how they have scored so many wins it's how mocking christ has become a commonplace in hollywood the reality is that they accuse us of what they are guilty of. They hold contempt of Christianity. The reality is that Christ's consciousness, take note of that. This is what Candice is tweeting, okay? Christ's consciousness, this is a new age language. They, a, a genuine believer is not going to be saying anything about Christ's consciousness, unless you are a new ager. The reality is that Christ's consciousness is rising throughout the world. And any person who's attempting to use methods of psychology to make people pause before they profess their faith is not on the side of goodness. Okay? And, you know, a whole bunch of people, uh, amen, the whole nine yards. Which is fine, you know, people can respond to that. There's no problem. Now, after Candice had tweeted, put that out, guess who, uh, who came to, who responded? Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate and Ben Shapiro don't see eye to eye. Andrew Tate, she, he's in good terms with Candice. Candice went all the way there and interviewed him. This is what Andrew Tate put out. As a Muslim, it warms my heart to see the resurgence of spirited Christians' declarations, Christ is King. And I pray Christianity regains its strength and protects its societies against the pervasive and constant erosion of morality by the devotees of Satan. If you accept everything, you stand for nothing. Okay? So, that's Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate is a Muslim. Muslims do not believe that Christ is king. When Christians say that Christ is king, we, there is a meaning that is behind it. And Candice Owens ended up liking that tweet, okay? So happy, like, okay, this is what um, 
Ben, uh, what's his name? Andrew, uh, Andrew Tate is saying, right? So, just because people are saying that Christ is king, uh, yes, it's definitely, it's correct. That's not anti-Semitic for sure. I 100% grant that. But every time that Candice has found herself in conflict with Ben Shapiro or with the Daily Wire, she always tweet out stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? Oh, Christ is king and everything. She even went as far as saying that, uh, you know, they're being persecuted. She's being persecuted. Okay. She's being persecuted because she's a Christian. I don't think so. I don't think Candice is being persecuted because she's a Christian. She find herself in this situation, you know what I mean, that the Jewish community uh, portrayed the things that she was saying as anti-Semitic. They've been saying that for quite some time. As the main reason as to why Candice was fired from Daily Wire, that has not been disclosed. We've seen Ben Shapiro here. He didn't say anything as to why Candice was fired. And... On the program yesterday, Jeremy Boring did not disclose as to why Candice was fired either. But since November up to now, ever since the Gaza war, Candice has found herself in conflict with the so-called Jewish community. And, you know, according to um, Jeremy Boring, just said, like, no, you know, uh, you know, they are pro-Israel. Uh, they don't support these anti-Semitic things of that nature. So if people are doing things that are in contradiction to the rules and regulations and policies of Daily Wire, they have no place at the Daily Wire. Because, you know, the other people, you know, to my knowledge, only Candace Owens has been on this issue of the Gaza issue, right? Now, you know, to say something about Jews, that doesn't mean everything is anti-Semitic, okay? There are things that are anti-Semitic, there are things that are not anti-Semitic. Unfortunately, because there's been people who have hijacked the term crisis king and they are using it as a jab against the Jewish community, now the Jewish community are seeing that as anti-Semitic. You see what I'm saying? So these are the things that have transpired. But Candice has used that to say crisis king as a jab even though she has denied it. But if you look as to why she was using that and giving the backstory, just like, ah, uh, no. So for me, Christ is king, absolutely, yes. But I'm not going to be like, okay, now I have to clap for Candice because she's saying that, even though she's using it uh, in a way, that, you know, like you're jabbing at somebody for that issue. Like, no, I'm sorry. So that I do not. Uh, that was put out by the CEO of Daily Wire, okay? So this is Jeremy Boring, okay? This is what he put out, okay? Uh, all right, then I'll, I'll make my comment. And this is what he put out, okay? How is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic? The question, so he's responding. The same way anything becomes anti-Semitic when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism. It's like asking, how does a shovel become a murder weapon? When it is used to murder someone, this isn't hard. A shovel is not innately a murder weapon. Saying Christ is king is not innately anti-Semitic. It's all about how a thing is used. Saying eat some cornbread is not racist. If I say it to my three-year-old when she is refusing her dinner. If I start saying it as a response to a Twitter post, by black commentators I don't like. It has taken on a meaning beyond what is what is innate. In other words, it is connotatively racist, not denotatively racist. So too, Christ is king may be anti-Semitic in connotation, why not in denotation, when it is being used to express anti-Semitism. When did this become so? It has always been so. It is so, yes, innately. Additionally, Saying Christ is king for an evil purpose, like using it as a weapon to express your hatred or disdain for the Jews, is a grave sin. It plainly violates the third commandment, thou shalt not carry forth the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Sure, if I, if I, uh, I cannot say that word, and murder someone like Hamas did on 10-7, and all the while I shout out them, Christ is king, or God is great, we would agree that I have committed three grievous crimes not two 
uh, that one, yes, murder, yes, but also the great crime of implicating God in the first two crimes. So one must be cautious how one uses the name of God. God will not be marked, invoking him in event self-promotion or to throw Jews or to attack your political rivals is to carry for his name in vain. Jesus Christ is king, sure enough, king of heaven and on earth, king of, uh, king of the Jews and Gentiles alike. Yet a bruised reed he will not break, and a fainter burn weak he will not smother. So don't use his name as a cudgel to bash those in whom the Lord of God yet flickers. If you do, you are a blasphemer and anti-Semite and a whatever. Generally, and the fear of the Lord is created not in you, it will be though. So this was the CEO of Daily Wire responding to Jason Whitrock, who had asked, I'm asking this sincerely, I'm a student of life, I'm not that smart, there are many things I do not know, this is a sincere question without snack or sarcasm or trolling, how is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic, when did this become true, okay, so by now I guess you guys, you see what's happening over here, right? They using that I do agree with JM Boring what he said over here. Okay? He is also a hypocrite, Jerry Boring himself, because he nicknamed himself as quote unquote God King. Something to that effect. So on that issue, like what he said over here, I grant to him it's correct, it's true. I do agree with him. But he should not be referring himself blaspheming the name of God. So those both of those things are definitely true. All right. So uh, I did like uh, the article that Samuel say put out. Okay. So at least I don't have to worry. This one is, is a brother. And we have to remember also, remember even with this issue about the Jews, right? There's different eschatology that Christians do have that disagree. So depending how you have your eschatology, you will have a different placement where you put Israel and the Jewish people and, you know, things of that nature. So those things, they also do uh, get in the way. All right, so this is an article that Samuel Say had written. I'll share this with you guys, okay? Here we go. Candace Owens and other conservatives have made Christ King a trending topic on social media. But like Pontius Pilate, who wrote an inscription saying, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, on Jesus' cross, they are not sincere. They are mocking Jesus and the Jews. However, for Christians, Christ is king is a theological and political statement about Jesus, divine identity and supreme authority over all creation, especially on Palm Sunday, a celebration of the day Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem days before the crucifixion. So for sincere Christians, Christ is king is about our love for Jesus. But for some Christless conservatives, it's about their hatred for Jews. Christ is King is trending on social media because after the Daily Wire ended their relationship with Candice Owens, Andrew Craven suggested her use of the phrase is anti-Semitic. Though some religious Jews say otherwise, Christ is King isn't anti-Semitic, it's the truth. The truth isn't anti-Semitic. Since the Bible says Christ is King, people who say it's anti-Semitic to say Christ is King are accusing God of anti-Semitism. However, like Pontius Pilate, when some conservatives say Christ is king, they are attempting to give him a crown of thorns. Candice Owens joined Twitter in 2017, but the first time she tweeted Christ is king was in November 2023. Bingo, 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 bingo. And guess what was happening in 2023? That was a tweet that I shared with you when she got into it with Ben Shapiro. Now, all of a sudden, she's saying that Christ is king. That's the problem, okay? And I continue, okay? Uh, uh, okay, Christ is king was in November 2023 in response to Ben Shapiro's criticism of her anti-Semitic words after Hamas terrorist attack against Israel in October. She has since successfully made Christ is King a slogan for anti-Semitic people. Anti-Semitic social media personalities like Sneeko tweeted, Christ is King. Sneeko is a Muslim. He doesn't believe Christ is King. He's just mocking Jesus and the Jews. 
Andrew Teddy, also a Muslim, said, As a Muslim, it was my heart to see the resurgence of spirited Christian declarations, Crisis King. One comment on Candace Owens recent tweet said, I'm not even a Christian, but them saying I can't say it makes, um, no, I'm, I'm not even a Christian, but them saying I can't say it makes me want to say uh, Christ is King. Jesus was to Jewish leaders in Matthew uh, 5, 8, describe these people. Jesus said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me. Their social media posts are not sincere. They do not believe Christ is king. They honor Jesus with their tweets, but their hearts are far from him. That is why they are using his name and titles in vain. If we do not live as though Jesus is Lord, then we do not sincerely believe his king. If we do not obey him as Lord, then we do not save him as king. It's evil to use Jesus' name and title in vain to mock anyone, but it's especially evil to use his name in vain to mock his ethnic people. In Romans 11, the Apostle Paul says, Gentile believers shouldn't be arrogant towards Jews because of their unbelief, especially since their unbelief is part of God's redemptive plan. Particularly in Romans 11, 18, he said, Do not be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, a, if you are remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Meaning, we shouldn't be anti-Semitic. If it wasn't for Jews, we Gentiles wouldn't be saved. The prophets are Jews. The apostles are Jews. And as the Apostle Paul says in Romans 7, 16, the deliverer will come from Zion. That deliverer is Jesus. Therefore, it's shameful for Gentile believers to be arrogant towards Jews. However, it's especially pathetic for Christless Gentiles to be arrogant towards them. After all, Christless conservatives are just as lost and condemned as Christless Jews. Amen, amen, amen. So when they say Christ is king to mock Jews, they are primarily mocking Jesus. However, they haven't considered the meaning of Christ is king. The word Christ is the Greek word for the Jewish word Messiah. So when we say the Messiah is king, what do we mean? What is he the king of? As Revelation 5.3 says, Jesus is the king of the nations. He's the king of America, the true king of England, the king of the every nation. However, whether they acknowledge him or not, he is uniquely the king of one ethnic group. Though he had the wrong motives, Pilate was right when he called Jesus the king of the Jews. The prophet Zechariah said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout out loud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a court. The fall of a donkey. Zechariah 9.9 Jesus is a Jew. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, Revelation 5.5. 5. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and Jews of Jews. He's the Deliverer from Zion. Zion belongs to him. Zion belongs to the King of the Jews. In that sense, Jesus is a Zionist. When he returns, he will establish his throne in the new Jerusalem, in the new earth, only uh, only the people who sincerely believe Christ is King will be part of his King down. Hallelujah. Okay. So that was the article that Samuel say put out. And I do agree with the article that he put out. Unfortunately, Christians have found themselves jumping on the bandwagon of Candace Crisis King, Andrew Tate, and all these other uh, Muslims. Okay. They do not believe that Christ is king. Just saying it with their lips, it does not mean. They, they do not, they honor him with their lips, but they don't, they don't believe those things. So this is similar to the saying, remember, when, uh, you know, it's this issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Black Lives Matter, right? When people are like, okay, Black Lives Matter, okay. Like, why should I say that? Like, you know, it creates this issue, you know, within the community and everything else. So I'm afraid that this term, Christ is King, is also creating that thing. That shouldn't be. Okay? Uh, people died to say uh, Jesus is King in the early church, right? Because Caesar is King, right? Kaiser Curious. People died just to say uh, Jesus is King. So why should we be out here, lose the term Christ is King for people like Andrew Tate and the likes? Just because they want to dunk on Ben Shapiro and whatever, and the Jewish people. For what reason? For what purpose? All of them, Andrew Tate, uh, Ben Shapiro, all these guys, we want them to bow the, the, the knee and to truly profess uh, Jesus is king. Jesus is king. So that's just how 
I am seeing it. Okay. Uh, Philippians 1, 15. Okay. Some indeed, preach, some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincere, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that, I rejoice. All right. So that was uh, Apostle Paul, right? Other people were doing it as a job. You know what I'm saying? But for him, it was just like, okay, I'm standing on the truth over here. Some do it for rivalry whatsoever. So these things do happen. It happened during that time. So other people were just doing it or whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? So if somebody ends up hearing uh, uh, Christ is king and they bow the knee, they, that used for them to search what it means Christ is king, that's a good thing. But us as believers, us as Christians, we cannot be purposefully drawing a crooked, uh, a crooked line, searching for crooked sticks, just because God can draw a straight line with a crooked stick. Our means, our end must be godly. You see what I'm saying? So if a Muslim is out there, is saying Christ is king in a mockery way, God can still redeem that. God can still use that. But me as a believer, as a Christian, I don't need to be jabbing at Ben Shapiro, rah, 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 Christ is king. You see what I'm saying? And they were like, no. So there's a way to use that phrase as a lying cry, but there's a way to use that phrase also in a way that's ungodly. So other Christians have found themselves jumping on this issue to be saying these things. So it has proven that Candice Owen has been a dirty wire for years. And the, the, the time that she was to proclaim Christ is king is when she got into it with Ben Shapiro. While all the while, while she was at, at Daily Wire, she was professing to be a Christian. And now she's saying that she's being, uh, uh, saying like, oh, you know, Christians are being persecuted, this, that, and the third. So I personally do not buy it. So on that, we call Candice to, you know, do not use the name in vain, okay? Uh, you know, d do it well. So, yes, whatever the issues that transpired at uh, Daily Wire, be that as it may, uh, you know, we don't have just to, uh, you know, give in. You know what I'm saying? She, you know, she has a right to talk about things. She has a right to defend herself. She has a right to do those things. But we cannot just pretend to be hiding uh, behind... We cannot be hiding behind, quote-unquote, crisis king. I don't think it's fair. This is also one of the uh, a tweet that she had put out. Hold on, guys. Okay? These are some of the things. You know, she can say whatever she's on. My crime is that I do not believe that American taxpayers should have to pay for Israel wars or the wars of uh, other countries. I will not change my mind. So the question is, what will you do to me next? The world is watching. Okay? So it's just like, you know, that's fine. That's what you think. Uh, people can have different uh, teams, right? But, you know, there is a geopolitical things that do go on, okay? And it is what it is. This is Candice right here, okay? And she's saying, this this is a cute attempt to rewrite history after you tried to cancel the phrase, but let's just recap what happened here for the record before you move on to trying to gaslight Christians, okay? Absolutely no one shouted Christ is king at a Jew. Rather, what happened was... Um, rather, what happened was that a group of nasty people tried to spearhead a PR campaign behind the scenes to smear me as anti-Semitic when it was announced that I parted ways with a daily wire. As proof of this, it was offered up that I tweeted Crisis King last November with ADL and Andrew Kevin. So all these things is just coming home to roast for her. But she went on to, to and you see where she is now? No weapon formed against me shall prosper, okay? This is, uh, this is the Sarah Jakes things over here, you know? I'm like, to me, you just can't be, if you have an issue, deal with the issue, okay? And obviously, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Well, I'm not going to go to the idea just taking the scripture out, out in vain over here. Just because you're having a disagreement with somebody, Come on, guys. Do we even have to 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 exegete this text now? Everybody, somebody disagrees with you. No, no weapon formed that me shall, shall prosper. Christians don't use scriptures this way. 
Okay, so I did put out over here. Why do you say the phrase when you're in conflict? How come you never use the phrase in the absence of conflict? Just saying the phrase is pointless. Catch your Christianity is worse. Real believers don't use scriptures in, in vain. Contextuousness is not the fruit of the spirit. Okay, so I, for one, I am not buying it. If somebody is attacking you, deal with the situation. You just can't be, oh, no weapon formed at me, uh, against me shall, shall, shall prosper. Okay, remember, just like, okay. And somebody pulled out and said, the skiv, uh, sons of Skiva, they were out there casting whatever demons, right, pretending, huh? and the demons came and says, like, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? <laughs> Even the devils are sons of Skiva, and they run out of there naked. Why? Because they were just throwing the name of Jesus, using it f uh, f uh, f for their own means. So, right now, just because these are the things that Candice is saying, right? As true as they may be, we want to go deeper than that issue. Okay? We want to go deeper than that issue, okay? But I think uh, I have prosecuted the case. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.